We're going to dive back into Lightroom Classic where we're going to take a look at a couple of different ways that you can make your subject pop, whether it's a portrait or something else. We're going to look at how you can get Lightroom to do it for you. And then we're going to look at how you can do it reasonably subtly using your own masks. Let's dive in. It's Toro Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Zero Tuesday, which we each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. If you like the sound of that, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Let's dive in to what we're going to be doing. We're going to start with this photo, which is, of course, of my dog. And we're going to look at how you can get Lyrum to make your subject pop for you. I've already done a basic edit to this photo, just a little bit of darkening the sky, a little bit of color work, but we're actually going to make our subject pop a little bit more in the frame. Now, first up, this works really well for a photo like this because we've got great separation between subject and background, right? We've got nice blurred out background. But the easiest way we can begin with this kind of thing is actually to come over onto the left where we are gonna go adaptive subject. We're looking at the presets here. And you'll see if you open that up, you've got a few different options for how you might want to proceed. And basically this is using Lightroom's built-in AI functionality to identify the subject in the frame and then apply a mask and then various things to that mask to actually make your subject pop. First up, you've got pop. So Lyrum, as you can see, as I just mouse over it, Lyrum's gonna identify my dog Nala and actually just brighten her. If I mouse off that for a second, you'll see dark and set down again. So it actually looks pretty subtle and pretty realistic as well. Warm pop's gonna do a very similar sort of thing, but applying some more warmth to it. So I think in this case, I probably prefer just the standard pop but absolutely, depending on the photo, that might work really well. We could go something like light, which is gonna go even more kind of aggressive, I guess, with brightening our subject, warm light, same sort of thing, but with a warm tone to it. That actually looks really good for this photo. And all you have to do is actually just select which one of these is gonna work for you, right? You've got a few different options based on the photo. Let's go ahead and click pop and we can click on that and it'll apply it to the photo. And you can actually come up here to the top here and adjust the amount that this is being applied. So if I was to bring this up, for example, you'll see she's brightened even more. If I bring it down, she's brightened less. So we're, we're changing the amount this preset is being applied. I actually think it's really good. Let's go for above 100, which I've almost never done. Let's go for 120-ish. And if you come over here to the right to the masking panel, you'll see there's a new mask applied. So you can actually adjust the mask yourself. You can click on the mask to see what Lyrum is doing. It's just masking out Nala here, and then you've got exposure up a little bit. So we can change things if you want to. If we wanted to warm it ourselves, we could. We could do something like that. That looks actually pretty good. And you'll see that if I come up and actually click and hold on this eye icon, I can just turn that mask off so you can see exactly what it's doing to the image, which is pretty cool. Now, in addition to that, I've got two other masks which are working alongside this, which I already applied to the photo. One is darkening the sky, and one is darkening the foreground. And so they are also helping to actually push our viewer's eye towards Nala. If I turn off all the masks up here, you'll see that without any of them, our subject is not popping nearly as much as it is with the masks on. And it still looks natural. It still looks reasonably subtle. You know, maybe I've gone a bit too far with the pop mask. But you know what? That takes seconds to sort out. And it, that whole thing, you could do that in 10 seconds, just letting Lightroom do that for you. But perhaps you want to be a little bit more subtle. Perhaps you want to do things a little bit differently. Let's look at another example. So I've used the Zeiss Otis 50mm to take this photo of myself, so self-portrait, and I'm just using window light coming from the side because I think that it's nice and somewhat dramatic in terms of the portrait. And that is, that is, you know, that tends to be the kind of portrait that I like to take. Slightly more dramatic lighting like this. Very, very moody. So let's go ahead and edit this and make our subject stand out a little bit more. So we could try and use something like the pop thing here, which is actually gonna work pretty well. But let's build it up ourselves, right? Warm pop works pretty well. Let's build it up ourselves. We're not gonna use that on this particular photo. The first thing I would do is come over here to the masking panel. And what I might start with is subject, right? We can actually just select our subject there, bring that exposure up very much like what the pop was doing but we're just doing it manually. And that way we've got full control. I'm gonna leave it like that, nothing too crazy. The next thing I'm gonna do is come in and do linear gradient. I'm gonna bring this in from this side. I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit and I'm gonna bring down the dehaze. That's where the light is coming from. So I wanna accentuate that a little bit. 
I'm actually going to do another linear gradient, something like this. But this one, I want to right click, intersect mask with, select subject. That way, we've actually got this linear gradient only applied to our subject. So I'm going to do something like this and just bring that exposure up. That's making our subject a little bit brighter, but in line with where the light is coming from, which is pretty cool. The other thing I might want to do is come in and do a radial gradient. I want to address the shadow on the face, right? It's just a bit too dark on this side. So we're going to do that. We're going to right click intersect mask with subject. And we're going to just bring that exposure up a little bit, nothing too crazy. And then the shadows up a little bit as well, just to help even out this side of the face, which was arguably a little bit too dark. Okay. That's looking, that's actually looking pretty good. Let's go create new mask. Let's come down here to select people. Now this is going to let me select myself which is great, but now we can select different aspects of me. I'm going to select my facial skin, and I'm also going to select the iris and pupil and the eye sclera. I've never learned how to say it. I assume that's how you say it, but I don't know. And we're going to go create three separate masks. Yeah, we'll leave that ticked on. We'll say create masks. Great. So the facial skin, I'm just going to bump the exposure up a tiny bit. Nice, because that's just going to help brighten our subject, right? It just helps. Mask six, this is the whites of the eyes. We're going to just bring that up a tiny bit with the exposure. Nothing too crazy. And then mask seven, let's go ahead and bring that exposure up a little bit as well. Let's come down here to saturation. Let's just bring that up a tiny bit as well. And down here to dehaze, we're just going to do a touch down on that. Okay, great. That is looking significantly better. Let's look at before and after. So this is where we started. This is where we've got to. Now, it might be a little bit bright on the left. The eyes might be a little bit crazy. Maybe we don't want it. Do you know what? Let's come down and undo the dehaze. Maybe that's what's getting a bit much there. We can always play around with that later. Now, this part on the side might be a little bit bright, but we are actually going to do something about that. Let's go ahead and do one more mask, radial gradient. I say one more. There will be more than one. Let's do a nice big radial gradient, something like this. And what I want to do is just brighten that. So a little bit more exposure there. Now, as you can see with all these masks, we're just building this up gradually. Everything is kind of a gradual build up because if we go in too, too hard on any one of these, it's going to be way too much. We're going to do another mask. We're going to go radial gradient, reasonably big one this time, something like this. And this time we're going to invert it. Now it's not always about brightening your subject. Sometimes you want to darken other areas. We're basically going to add a bit of a vignette, something like this. Right, let's bring it down even more. Now that is looking pretty good, I would say. We might want to come back in. Do you know what I think is a little bit too much? Is possibly this mask here. I might want to just bring down the exposure of touch, something like that. Okay, that's a little bit better because there is shadow on that on that right side. We don't want to completely undo that. It starts to look a bit unnatural. Let's look at the before and after. Before, after, before and after. We're really getting our subject popping out from that background now, which I think is looking pretty good. So that's two different ways that we've approached that, right? One is to use Lightroom's built-in tools. So the Lightroom basically does all the work for us, which is great to be honest. I mean, the AI tools here work really well. And in terms of editing, it just makes your life easier. And sometimes, you know, it's nice to do it manually like we've done here. And you have much more control and you can build it up subtly. But sometimes if you've got a lot of photos to edit and actually if it works, sometimes it's just useful to use those Lightroom tools let Lightroom do the heavy lifting and let it kind of just crack on. And you can also then crack on. Depends a little bit on the photo. Something like this photo here, you know, you might want to take a little bit more time because we've gone for a very moody look, right? Whereas some other photos, when you don't have that mood look, it's easier to, to kind of get where you want to go. Now, of course, we've done other videos about making your subject pop using things like the lens blur tool to actually separate your subject from the background using a kind of shallow depth of field effect within Lightroom. We've looked at other techniques to brighten your subject, to draw the viewer's eye. There's lots of different ways to do this, but this is one specific way I've been playing around with a lot recently is whether I'm manually building this up or letting Lightroom do the work. I thought it was an interesting tutorial, but if there's something specific you would like to see in a future tutorial Tuesday, let me know down in the comments because I definitely want to make the stuff you guys want to see. You've had some great suggestions recently as well, so absolutely keep them coming. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new content all the time. I will see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.